Rapa or Firefly, which break DPS is ultimately going to be better for your account? That's what I aim to discuss with you today. My name is Juice, and let's get into it. First things first, why don't we discuss what similarities we have? Of course, both of them are break DPSs, specifically Super Break, and they use very similar teammates in Ruan Mei, Harmony MC, Gallagher, or Ling Shaw. I believe that Rappa Super Breaks are going to be very strong, and as we all know, Firefly is quite the nuclear bomb when it comes to her breaks. Of course, both heavily rely on the enemy being broken for them to do the majority of their damage. I believe that they're actually going to be pretty strong on each other's dedicated bosses, which is funny, considering that they will both be tailored to Super Break teams. And that's where the similarities end, honestly. So now we gotta get onto their differences. First things first, Firefly has a weakness implant. This is one of the major things that separates the two. Rappa can ignore weaknesses at a lower efficiency with her ult, but this isn't going to be neat in game modes like MOC, where enemies have much bigger toughness bars. I suppose you could say Rappa is pretty weak against non-imaginary weak enemies. Haha, <laughs> hilarious, I know. I will say that does mean she'll be fine for clearing out trash mobs because they already have a very naturally low toughness bar. Therefore, even if you're using her in a pure fiction where the enemies don't have an imaginary weakness, she's still going to wipe the floor clean, because she'll still be decimating trash mobs no matter what. This means that even if her performance and MOC and Apocalyptic Shadow fall off after her banner period is over, she'll still be very reliable in pure fiction. Another neat difference which is in favor of Rappa is that she uses way less skill points than an E-Zero Firefly, therefore she is able to drive Ling Sha far more effectively. Firefly needs E1 for her to feel really good with Ling Sha, because otherwise you're not going to be able to use the Healer Lady's skill every turn, therefore not accessing the huge amount of fire toughness damage in her kit, plus you're not able to give Fu Yuan more actions. Both our gorgeous Dragon Lady and Funky Ninja are going to feel pretty harmonious together. And that's right out of the box at E0, no Eidolons required. So if you're a massive free-to-play Ling Shaw fan, then you're eating well with Rappa. However, unfortunately, this doesn't really matter anymore once you get E1 Firefly, because that lifts a very heavy skill point burden off of the shoulders of said team. So at that stage, they pretty much utilize Ling Sha with an equal amount of effectiveness, if not skewing a bit more in Firefly's favor because she implants fire weaknesses. This does raise the topic of elemental coverage though, as this means that Rappa isn't only imaginary dependent. If the enemies have a fire weakness, Lingsha or Gallagher can break him down, and you'll have a chance opened up for Rappa to fry the enemy with her super breaks. However, do note that Firefly's weakness implant affects more than just herself. Think about it, Gallagher and Lingsha are fire, and if a future break support were to be fire, they'd all be contributing to the breaks. Another key difference is that Rappa is more AoE-centric, as stated earlier with her amazingness in Pure Fiction, whereas Firefly is more of a single target chill, because as we all know, Firefly's blast attacks only hit up to three enemies at a time. So what does this make each character good at? Well, as I've already stated multiple times, Rappa is the pure fiction queen. Firefly can't really compete with her in this field. Yes, you can brute force a clear with her, especially if your Firefly is higher investment, but the ninja's pure fiction clears are more likely to be more comfortable. Firefly will be better on MOC, however. I believe that the Common Rider will be better in Apocalyptic Shadow on the whole, but during the ninja's dedicated Apocalyptic Shadow, I wouldn't be surprised if she felt great there too. Do keep in mind that Apocalyptic is all about breaking the enemies, so I would not be surprised if the Super Break DPS would feel pretty good there, especially if imaginary weaknesses were present. As we've seen over time, ever since the Common Rider's release, she survived pretty decently outside of her dedicated content thanks to her weakness implant. I do believe that Rappa in turn is going to feel a bit rougher when there's no imaginary weakness. As long as a couple of the targets have an imaginary weakness, you should be fine, or even fire for the sake of Ling Sha or Gallagher, but if not, then yeah, you're kinda cooked. The real debate is whether Rappa is worth it if you already have Firefly. Well, I would say only if you really suck at pure fiction. There's no need to get her if you have a perfectly fine and functioning Firefly, especially considering the upcoming banners. Think about it, Sunday has been hyped up for an absurd amount of time. I would not be surprised if he ended up being one of the new best characters in the game. 
and Sunday's a damn five-star harmony unit. That should speak for itself. And Fugue I will be absolutely flabbergasted if Fugue is not a good character. When it comes to upgrading over your other pure fiction teams, well, if you already have a Jade, you don't really need to get Rappa. I do believe a Jade's gonna be a better PF unit, and if you've got a perfectly fine him or a team, then yeah, she's also not as needed. Plus, if you recently picked up Fei Xiao, you can consider playing the Yao Ching General next to Herda, Robin, and then Aventurine for a pretty surprisingly strong pure fiction team. Like, man, for a hunt unit, she absolutely cooks the game mode in this comp. Don't knock it till you try it. She's definitely more of a pickup for veteran players as opposed to somebody who has just joined the game because a new player should be going for the more flexible options this patch, e.g. Acheron and Aventurine. If you want the super specific imaginary weakness coverage that she provides, or if you don't have Jade or you feel like your pure fiction teams are not up to snuff, then Rappa is definitely going to impress you and will be worth your time. And if you've already got a Firefly, I will say that they share teammates, but considering that I don't think that the Common Rider is as good in pure fiction, if you've got many characters and you feel like your roster is pretty built up for the other game modes, then there is no harm in expanding your PF roster. The thing is, I would not be surprised if, after we've gotten way more dedicated 5-star pure fiction units, such as Argenti, Jade, and Rappa and whatnot, the game mode would see some sort of expansion in the way that MOC did. You're pretty much always going to get more value out of pulling for a character that is able to do all three game modes very competently. Because contrary to what you might think, more often than not, units who can do that are really good, such as Acheron or Fei Xiao, because I would argue that Fei Xiao's main game mode would be Apocalyptic Shadow, but she just so happens to absolutely break all the other game modes too. I will say that Rappa's super specific nicheness is going to make her the absolute best at what she does. If you really specifically need a character who can burst down large enemy waves that have imaginary weaknesses, there is going to be no better character for the job. No contest. However, that's the thing. That is a very specific scenario that you're definitely not always going to be in, which is why she is more specific coverage for someone that has been in the endgame for quite a long time now. Sure, Firefly may not have the absolute PF prowess that this competitor of hers does, but does she really need that considering how amazing that Firefly is in general? Now don't get it twisted, Rappa does look like she will be a good unit, I am not calling her bad whatsoever, Firefly is a really tough competition to deal with, and she was cursed with a super unfortunate banner placement, we all know how strong Acheron is, we all know how amazing Aventuring still is, and we all know that Sunday and Fugue are going to totally break the game, she was unfortunately set up to be a filler 5 star from the beginning, despite having a pretty decent kit. It. Why do you think that there's no limited 5 star in the second half of 2.6? This is obviously the calm before the storm of the banger patch that is going to be 2.7. Considering that Hoyaverse is steadily buffing breaks, she will most likely get buffs in the future. However, all break buffs will always be Firefly buffs first and foremost, though she will always remain the queen of Imaginary Week content. Rappa is certainly skippable if you have a Firefly. And if you don't, wait for Acheron, or other new DPSs who will most likely be more busted than her. The 3.x era is also not too far away, I would not be surprised if a totally new meta were to come upon us, so I really feel like Rappa's days are numbered, she's not going to remain relevant for very long. However, do not think that Rappa is bad, because that is not the message I want to spread whatsoever. I do think that she is so good at what she does. She is just very specific. Consider that the volume of 5 stars that comes out in Star Rail is really fast, eventually we're gonna have to get around to the more niche characters. Not everyone has to be some crazy generalist. A character like this is fine every now and then. Unfortunately, because of the sheer volume of 5 stars that we get in this game, I can't really recommend her in good faith considering that we're going to be getting such crazy 5 stars soon, but you won't be disappointed with her. Her performance is completely fine. But I do not believe that it is going to hold a candle to Firefly in the long run. I do think that they cover their own fields pretty comfortably. Even after her dedicated time period, I still believe that Rappa is going to feel pretty good to play in PF. Her weakness ignore, though not as strong against non-imaginary weak enemies, is more than enough to comfortably decimate trash mobs. If you own Firefly but still want Rappa's specific coverage, you will be very pleased with what she can do. Even so, I do think that if you're not struggling with PF whatsoever and you own a Firefly, or heck, even if you don't, Rappa's an easy enough skip. 
Hopefully this video was able to tell you whether Rappa or Firefly is stronger for your Honkai Star Rail account. This has been Juice, signing out, and do you think Rappa would be good at the Club Penguin Card Jitsu minigame?